Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate y'all being here. And if you're new to the channel, uh, if you're finding us for the very first time, you know, welcome. It's good to have you. And our topic for you today is Jim Sales Follow-Up Techniques. Jim Sales Follow-Up Techniques. Now, before we get into our topic today, just a quick reminder, you know, my focus, my mission here in the channel is I want to be able to provide as much information as I can to as many people as I can, you know, across the globe. And the best way I can do that is when you choose to subscribe to the channel. So if you've not yet done so, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And then to learn more about me, learn more about my company and how we can help take your business that next level, you know, be sure to check out those links below. And then for you folks who are looking to open a new gym, you need funding. You're looking to acquire a gym, you need funding. You have an existing gym, you need some working capital. You know, we can help provide funding from between fifty and four hundred thousand dollars in funding. It's unsecured. There's no restrictions on use, and the basic qualification for that program is a six hundred and eighty or better credit score in all three credit bureaus: Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and a minimum income of fifty thousand per year each of the two previous years. You can check out the links below under financing and funding for more information on that particular program. And so with that said, you know, let's jump into our topic here. It's gym sales follow-up techniques. Okay. I want to give you some thoughts on follow-up. You know, I would say follow-up is one of the biggest issues that the gym industry has. Uh, we don't do it right. We don't do near enough of it. Okay. And for you gym owners out there and operators, the great thing about follow-up, you know, from a, a, a dollar uh, cost perspective, you've already spent the money. Now we get better at following up. You know, you, I've seen gyms improve their business by 20% just by following up. And for you folks that are in membership sales and management, you know, you know you're know, you going to raise your, your, uh, uh, your earnings as well. And so gym follow-up techniques, let's talk about a few things here. Uh, number one is use a variety of follow-up methods. Use a variety of follow-up methods. You know, the first thing I would say here, don't stop making phone calls. Okay. Generally, the reason that people don't pick up the phone is they're afraid they're going to be sold something. We'll talk about some of that here and some of these techniques. But make sure that we have a servant mentality. We're a resource center for folks. We're providing value. Okay. We're looking out for the customer, trying to help them solve problems. They'll start answering the phone a whole lot more often if that's what we're trying to do. Okay. But with that said, use a variety of follow-up methods. I always, I, I, I emphasize the phone because too many people don't want to do it. All they want to do is text and that's not going to be enough. Okay. So call them, text them, email them, direct message them. Uh, you got messenger, you got WhatsApp, um, you got video messages, you've got audio messages. There's a lot of ways to do this. You can mail something through the postal service. Okay. A lot of ways to communicate. Don't just use one. Okay. Communicate at a variety of levels. And I would even say that, you know, posting on social media, posting videos, posting blogs, posting, you know, uh, information, what's going on. It's another great way to communicate. People are going to see that. Okay. But use a variety of follow-up methods. Don't just use one because that may not be how they like to communicate. Everyone's a little different. You know, some want to go on Slack and talk and some want to go on Discord and talk. And there's a lot of different things out there. Okay. Number two, space it out. Now, what I mean by this is it's not just an onslaught and then you stop. Okay. The first thing I would say here is, you know, if we're truly sold ourselves. If we truly know we can help solve our customer's problem, we truly know that we have the best venue to solve it at, and we truly know now's the best time to do it, let's act like it, okay? And let's follow up, okay? And let's provide value when we do, okay? But it's almost like when the customer leaves that night, when's the best time for a follow-up call? How about when they get home? You know, if it is a sincere call, you know, we're trying to help them solve their problem. We're recognizing, hey, they're, they're having some challenges. They've been thinking about it for a year. They're this close to doing something. They need some help to kind of get over the finish line. It's not, hey, are you ready to buy? That's not the message. 
Okay, not unless they told you, hey, call me and I'll give you an answer. You know, different story. But generally speaking, we're trying to maintain interest. We're trying to maintain desire. We're trying to nurture that customer. Number three, this one's huge and I've kind of alluded to it, but provide value with every follow-up. No matter what you're doing, you're going to send them a video message, an audio message, an email, a text, a phone call, whatever it is. Make sure every touch every communication has value it's not just are you ready to buy unless that's the unique circumstance we know that that's kind of what what, what we're down to okay fine but generally that's really not what follow-up's going to be make sure every call provides value and this remember this we're trying to solve problems for our customer we're trying to solve problems we're trying to break down barriers we're trying to be easy to do business with number four Always define next steps. Always define next steps. So when you do talk to your customer, don't just talk to them and then, okay, thanks. Would it be okay if I followed back up in about seven days to see how things are going? Would it be okay if I gave you a call in a couple days to kind of talk about that video? Would it be okay if I gave you a call when you got back from vacation? You know, there's power in asking questions. There's power and asking permission, but always define the next step. You usually want to schedule that next call right there. Number five, subject lines matter. You know, when you're sending out any message that has a subject line in it, just know that subject lines matter. You know, one of the things that works well, put their name in that subject line. Okay, you know, whatever problem they're trying to solve could be in that subject line. You know, just to say, hey, I'm following up may not be enough, okay? Because we want to be solving their problem and we want to put them in a position to get the best results possible. And then last on my list on Jim follow, sales follow-up techniques, this could be also Jim sales techniques, but keep it brief. Keep it brief. Modern selling, it's about fast, quick, easy, friendly. Fast, quick, easy, friendly. That's modern selling. That doesn't mean we rush through it doesn't mean we skip steps, but we are respectful of the customer's time. If they come in the gym, you know, we're not going to spend an hours with them. We're going to spend, you know, maybe from beginning to end, maybe it's 20 minutes, depending on circumstances, right? When we're on the phone, be respectful of their time. We're not talking about the weather or things that, you know, aren't going to matter. Hey, they're busy. And one of the things that I like to get in the habit of doing, you can check the channel here, actually on how to make an outbound call. Highly recommend that for you on, on a, the key steps of making that outbound call. Okay, it tie right into this for you. But one of the things that I like to do on that outbound call is always ask permission to speak. Mary, is this a good time for you? More often than not, they're going to say yes. Okay, they've given you permission to talk. Makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, but go check out that video on how to make an outbound phone call. It'll make a big difference for you. But keep it brief. We want to provide value. We want to help get them results. We want to be respectful of their time. Doesn't mean we're rushing. Doesn't mean we're cutting corners. So folks, again, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. Appreciate you being here at the channel today. And if you've not yet done so, please take a moment. Hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And then to learn more about me, learn more about my company, and how we can help take your business that next level, be sure to check out those links below. And then again, for you folks who are looking to open a new gym, you need funding. You're looking to acquire a gym, you need funding. Maybe you own a gym, you need funding. You know, we can help provide funding from between 50000 up to $400,000 in funding. It is unsecured. There's no restrictions on use. The basic qualification for that program is a minimum credit score of 680 or better in all three credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, and a minimum income of 50000 per year each of the two previous years. You can check the links below under financing and funding for more information on that program, as well as information on other financing options uh, that we have available for you. So folks, again, I appreciate you being here today, and we look forward to seeing you all in that next video.